Right, so back to the task in hand. Before I was very rudely interrupted with a very strong alcoholic cocktail. Yes, John, you're a bad influence. So, we are making squash and apple soup with cider from the Sainsbury's magazine for September. Um, again, we're sort of pretty sticking to seasonal stuff at the minute. Um, squash is available all year round, but we are coming up to squash season where they will be more um, abundant or available. There will be lots of different ones. This one is calling for butternut squash, but I think that's probably because it's just the most easy to get hold of. Um, so, the first thing we need to do is we need to pre our ovens to 180 degrees and then we're going to peel and chop the butternut squash into sort of three centimeter cubes which are then going to go into the oven and roast for 20 minutes okay so i have as you can see peeled and took the pips out of my squash and cut it into nice chunky chunks basically so now you need to get two tablespoons of olive oil, drizzle it all the way over your squash and then mix it to make sure that the squash is covered with the oil. Now I'm not going to measure this, you can measure it if you want, I'm just going to drizzle lightly. Then you need to season it with salt, no pepper in this for some reason but a bit of season with salt, give it a mix around and make sure that your squash has got a covering of oil. If you've got any bits that are a little bit bigger than the rest, put them on the outside. They tend to cook quicker there than they will on the inside. So, this is now going into the oven at 180 for 20 minutes. After your squash has been in for 20 minutes, you core and cut into wedges two of your apples. You need three for the recipe. So two of them, you core and cut into wedges and then you put them on your baking tray with your squash and you put it back in the oven for another 25 minutes. So all in all, your squash is gonna get 40 minutes of cooking time and your apples are 25. I'm not going to do that right now because obviously if I do it now they're going to go brown and I don't want that. But the next stage after that is to make your stock if you like. Okay, so I've melted half of my butter and I've chopped my red onion. So it doesn't really matter how you chop your red onion because it's all going to get blitzed in the end anyway. So in it goes and you want to fry this off for 8-10 to 10 minutes until it's soft but you don't want any colour on it. So you're going to have to keep your eye on it and keep it moving around. Okay, so my onions are now practically there, basically. Um, with a red onion, as I just said to John, once you start cooking it, the colour seems to start coming out of it, so I guess that's how you can tell but you don't want it to go brown, so don't brown your onions. You're not frying them, you're just softening them. Or caramelizing them, is that the proper term? Well, maybe? you caramelize them if you put them go brown, so that's not caramelizing. No, don't caramelize them. So I've got two nice big fat bulbs of garlic. So big, they won't go in my squeezer. I uh, know, I did pick a decent sized bulb, sorry about that. Well, there's one, and it goes. Where's my knife? When you send me shopping, you just say, you know, get what you can, I always try and get the best. Yes, yeah, so I certainly did get a chunky bowl of garlic. Make sure we don't waste any. I'm going to mix that around for another, just literally a minute or two because you don't want to burn garlic. There's nothing worse than a burnt garlic. Okay, so I've cooked my onions and my garlic and the next stage is to add the cider. So you need a medium dry cider. We've used Henry Weston's because it was the first one we picked up, but you use whatever you need, as long as it's medium dry. 
Once we've got the cider in with the onions and garlic, we need to turn our heat up so that it's simmering nicely and then we need to sort try and reduce the cider by two thirds. So the first thing your cider does is deglaze the pan, which is always a good thing. So the next stage now is our squash has had about 20 minutes in the oven. Now I'm going to chop and core our two apples and cut them into wedges and add them into the tray with the squash to roast for another 25 minutes. So I'll just quickly do that. I think the thing with this soup is it's quite a complex recipe if you like there's lots of stages to it but the different stages are all designed for a specific reason so hopefully at the end of all of this we should have a really flavoursome soup on lots of different levels so that's what we're doing if we roast things it enhances flavour it brings out sweetness so you don't have to peel the apples no you don't have to peel them you just need to core them are we using eaten apples they are eating apples, absolutely. These are Braeburn, um, but Cox's would be fabulous if you can get them. They're not quite here yet, they're not quite in the shops just yet. So as you can see, the squash is starting to caramelise on the corners, which is absolutely what you want to do, and I've added my eating apples. So now it's going to go back in for another 25 minutes. Once your cider has reduced by two thirds, we're going to add the chicken stock. This is made with two stock cubes. It's a litre. If you are vegetarian, then just use vegetable stock. That's absolutely fine. So. Now I'm going to increase the heat slightly to bring that chicken stock back to a nice simmer. So the stock is now ready. I'm going to put it onto the back burner to keep it warm, but just keep it warm. It doesn't need to be simmering over or anything. And I'm going to get myself a frying pan and fry off six rashers of smoky bacon. We're using that one. We are. Um, it's streaky. There's not a lot of fat on it, but if you did have fat on it, you want to basically fry this until it's nice and crispy because all this is going to do is get broken up and sprinkled on the top of your soup. So if you're a vegetarian, you don't need to do this, obviously, at all. So the final piece of the preparation for the presentation of the soup, if you like, is we need to finely chop another eaten apple and then melt the rest of our butter in the frying pan with the fat from where we cooked the bacon. Um, the, we are going to stir fry the apple for three to four minutes until it goes nice and soft and the butter browns and then we're going to set that to one side with the bacon so that once we blitz the soup we're ready to just add it as a garnish on the top. It's the pretty fat. It it's is a, a restaurant it garnish. Is. It is, it is. If you are a vegetarian and you've left out the bacon piece bit, maybe it'd be nice to do the apple thing. If you're having a Halloween party or a dinner party over the winter, then do the bacon and the apple and the faff and all the rest of it because it will look lovely and it will add to the taste of the soup. It, it may be that the smokiness does add a bit to the soup. Maybe. But if you're doing this soup to stick in front of your two teenagers like I am and a husband who really don't care whether there's apples and bacon on top or not then just make the soup and serve it. It really is up to you how deeply you want to go into this, how much love you want to inject into your soup. How much restaurant or how much home you want to put And let's be fair, if I stuck this in front of my teenagers they're not going to say, oh mum, that's a lovely piece of bacon and apple garnish you've put on my soup. They're going to say, have we got any more bread? So, you know, you do you. But basically I'm going to do the recipe as is so that you can see it in its entirety. Okay, so we are getting there. I have just got this stuff out of the oven, the squash and the apple, and we now need to put the squash and the apples from our baking tray into the stock. Be careful, obviously, because you don't want it to splash everywhere. Now 
Once you have it in the stock, the ideal is to bring the stock back to a simmer. As you can see, mine's quite simmering quite nicely anyway. And then, if you have a stick blender, you need to use your stick blender and blend it till completely smooth. I don't have a stick blender, so I'm going to have to use a proper blender. Use, use my, that one. Yeah, use my proper blender, which means I'm going to have to probably do it in stages, but we'll see. Well, that was pretty much it. That is it. Once you've blended it until it's smooth, you can dish it up and then cut your bacon into little crispy pieces and add them on top of your soup along with some of the little bits of apple that you've just fried. I noticed they're over there actually, they're, yeah, they're draining on a bit of kiss and roll right now. They don't look the absolute best because you have to cook them in the bacon well, fat. Yeah, so. I don't think they're designed to look good, I think they're designed to taste good and anyone who eats meat and loves bacon knows that anything that's fried in bacon fat is going to be brilliant. Mushrooms are fantastic. So. Absolutely. That's so a lot in there. That is our basic soup, which we are now going to transfer and blitz. And so there we have it. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. Squash and apple soup with cider. I'm certainly not here to wash up the dishes. No. no. Excuse the state of my kitchen. It looks like the bomb site. The bomb site, yeah. currently. But two recipes in one go yeah, is we, never yeah. easy. Yeah, the, uh, the, the cocktail. They if you missed the well. cocktail recipe, go back. go back and see the video before this one. I'm glad you drank the cocktail before you started this. There's quite a lot of bits uh, and pieces to do. There's quite a lot of bits and pieces to do in this, and so I think the cocktail probably mellowed me out a bit because exactly. it was quite stressful at people. I, I knew it would be good. So, um, is it worth it? That's we'll see. Hmm. Looks good. It looks very good. You put a little, little bit of crispy bacon I've in. I put some bacon on it. I put the apple on it. You'll so see it on a picture I've just put on. That's exactly how it should look. Yeah. Except for I've got the thyme, but the thyme is literally just as a garnish. It's just another as well, little so. bit of herb on the top. If you're not into herbs, it doesn't matter. It looks a bit lighter than your normal butternut squash soup that you make. Very sweet. I've got a bit of. Apple. It is sweet, but. Nice. That's nice. I've just had a piece of apple as well. Like I said, it's lighter than your normal, mm. pretty heavy country style. Yeah. Butternut squash soup. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a golden vegetable one. Golden vegetable, sorry. Yeah. So we so. will um, we will do that one at some point. But that you get. It's nice. I can see why they, you know, put you through all the different stages yeah, because you can taste layers. the cider. You, you can. can taste the chicken stock. You can certainly taste. The onions and the garlic. That was too hot, John, wasn't it? That was too hot. Yeah, go. On. You can taste all those things. You can. And I think, yeah. So you made a mess, too. I didn't did. You? Yeah. Nice though. It is nice, and it's absolutely one of the things that that would be perfect for an autumn, winter evening. Yeah, little party as well, maybe. It's nice. All right. Yes, it has got a few layers to make, but if you think about it, most of those happen whilst the stuff is, is stuff actually is roasting yeah um this soup is freezeable because so there's no cream there's no cream or anything in it so um i will be it makes probably about two nearly two liters a well, liter and a half so if liters. you think about it you put a liter of stock in you put 500 mils a whole bottle of cider, cider in, in plus then you've got all the liquid Vegetables from the veg and everything and because it wouldn't be surprised if you only got two liters of soup we've got well, really that's gonna be hot one. yeah, yeah not gonna but that's, that's a sizable saucepan, you saw the one we were using earlier, and that's full. So that's going to feed a lot of people. Mm. That actually it's bits really on nice. the top is really nice yeah, too. Yeah, I know. As much as you were saying, what you said about it, it's the faffy bit, the restaurant -y bit. Maybe that's why when you go to a restaurant, it tastes a little bit different than when you go at home. Because Maybe those little is. extra little bits, the bits yeah. of bacon, the bits of... And I think, uh, like the caramelisation that you get on the edge of the um, butternut squash and the apples that you roast, you can taste those... You know, those bits too. I am so messy. I do you are so I messy, know. honestly. You're always the same. I know. I can't take you anywhere. No, not you, bib. <laughs> it's, it's very good. It's very good. So. We're going to go. We're going to go. It's quite a long bit of the video. Yeah, it? I apologise for the length of this video. But not your fault. There's lots of bits and pieces too. Um, I think John's going to put chapters in. So if you want to skip the chat, you can just go to yeah. one bit to the next bit. Like, people um, like the chat. 
as I said, it's in the Sainsbury's magazine for September. Um, what else? If you haven't subscribed yet, do please subscribe. Hit the notification bell and come and say hello whenever we put a new thing on. Yeah, um, we kind of do at least three videos a week right now, maybe more. We've got a whole stack that's already been made, so we can, we're way in advance. We can keep pushing stuff out for you all the time. We're going to try our best. Yeah, we've got um, to grow the channel, so the more videos we get out, the quicker we grow. Absolutely. So thank you all for joining us. Come please, back again yeah. soon. Please and subscribe. We will see you all again. Please hit the all those things. I said come that. Come and join Big Oggy World and Big Oggy Golf. i got to say it, I said it on every video. Go on. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye now. I've got to clear this mess up now. Okay. Look I've at got, it. I've got to edit all this mess. It's very nice. You may eat the soup if you like the soup. Whilst I clear the rest of this.